time. <laughs> <laughs> well, we know time is a construct. So we don't have to use only one construct of time. The fact that we have, you know, Cynthia was looking at this idea of the construct of time, that you know, we've organized time in seconds and minutes and hours and days, and, uh, and we know that that's part of our experience of time, but we also know that sometimes it feels like, um, like when I got <laughs> this funny experience when I go to the gym, I can hardly imagine that in a couple of hours I'm actually going to be putting on my clothes to leave. It's like, <laughs> is this never going to end? <laughs> um, and then there are other times when, you know, I can be doing something and a couple of hours will pass and they'll go, wow, what happened there? Um, so, you know, it's, it's like it's an effect, it's an experience, and we know that if you do particular things, you, you, you're likely to have that experience. Uh, and that is kind of the way that we work. Um, we, can't, we can't necessarily guarantee it. We can't say, this is what you're going to get out of it. This is, this is what's going to happen to you. But, but fairly consistently, um, at points in this process that we lead people through, that happens. And it's, you know, again, we're, we're al almost always returning to experience. So if you can, it, and again, whether, whether timelessness, having the sense of time, like we, th we think the time, that sense, which you, some, we used to call flying time sometimes. We, that, now, that didn't really kind of catch on <laughs> in our whole community. But, you know, what, time flies when you're having fun, that idea. Um, we don't necessarily hold that as, okay, this is what we're trying to create, and, and so that's our job is to create that sense. It, it seems to be an experience that comes along with what we do. And we know that that is um, generally a good experience for people, you know, when they can get out of that. So, um, and what we believe is that that's good for the body, both in the short term and the long term. Um, in general, what we would say is that if, if we pay attention to the things that feel good in the body, and these are the things that um, are good for us now and also good later. There are a bunch of things that feel good now but are <laughs> bad for us, you know, in the long term. Um, so we want to be able to make that distinction. But if we pay attention to the things that really feed us, that enliven us, that give us energy, that uh, give, gives us a sense of openness, or even those bigger experiences of awe or timelessness or whatever, um, that we believe that those experiences are good not just in the moment, but they they're having an effect on our bodies in the long term as well. And, you know, it's been interesting for us that fairly consistently the, the, br the brain people have been confirming what we've been teaching. That's, that's always <laughs> fun. <laughs> We're able as craftspeople to <coughs> create, well, anytime you have an open enough circle, uh, you can bring whatever level of intellect or interest or desire you have. So by not describing too tightly what people have to do, there's a lot of room for people to be engaged. Uh, and then things can be very short so they don't feel overwhelmed. If people don't feel engaged or they feel overwhelmed, time is going to go really slow, right? So like as craft crafting an experience, we're paying attention to physical elements of how, how you create a sense of flow, um, how you create a sense of engagement that feels like it's uh, alive and where you stop thinking about time, right? Or stop thinking about how bad you feel or how good you feel. You're, you're not focused on yourself. You're focused on something happening. And that is in the neighborhood of timelessness. Um, so it's a beautiful thing to <laughs> you know, I feel like I'm in the, in the magic shop a lot of time as a teacher because um, I've learned a lot of these skills that, you know, people only over in the dance department learn. You wouldn't want to go there because why would anything good happen there? You know, like choreography, time, space, energy. Why do you think dance has been so discounted? It's the magic shop. Time, space, energy, power. Dance is a virtual realm of power, the powers of interaction and intersection. So like timelessness, you know, all you have to do is start a drum. Get the rhythm going and people s suddenly are not thinking about time. Isn't that weird? I love that. 
I, I've had this experience over and over again teaching the way that we teach, um, is that we move people through a particular process and there's, there's a particular result and people are kind of amazed at the result. Yes. And you know, I hear, in, I hear kind of the, ama the amazement in that, but since I've led this process, people through this process many times with the same result, right? You know, it's, learning is pretty predictable that this happens. And you know, my this is my own crackpot brain theory um, is that, you know, as we think about some of these bigger, bigger experiences, our timelessness, or you know, however we want to describe those, that you know, those are things that are happening in a particular part of the brain. And what I believe is that actually that part of our brain only gets activated by movement and activity. So it's not, th at, at this point in the function, you know, our, our, our nervous systems are set up so that uh, there's information going from our brain out to our nervous system, and there's information that's coming in from our in, uh, nervous system that's informing our brain. So, I, you know, I think what, what I kind of believe is that by activating these various processes, whether it's moving or singing or telling stories or, or, or having stillness or being in contact with other people, that we're waking up certain parts of the brain where those experiences are activated. That, that's where that happens. I mean, it doesn't really matter, ultimately, physiologically. But what we know is that what I, what I keep noticing is that, that it's through activity, it's through the body doing something that we get to that place. Mm. And so, we ask people to do those things, and that thing happens, and it happens consistently, pretty <laughs> consistently, and it it's happens. It's science. <laughs> it's a science. We just didn't write it down and get a grant and all that. And it doesn't seem to matter so much about, um, you know, geography or mm -mm. or or culture, um, culture or race or age or whatever. That that it's pretty. Um, pretty consistent. And this is not, I mean, we didn't make this stuff up. Uh, ultimately, this other, other peoples have learned, have known about this forever. We're just, um, I think, in, in maybe in Western culture, we just have this particular task of, of, of rediscovering that the, this truth that we've been cut off from. I want to share another thing from the magic shop. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and that is, uh, this has been so important to me because it's a, a, such a big issue for me, and it has to do with how connected bodies are one to another. Um, like f early on, I just love the feeling of being in a choir, right? Um, that sense of ensemble, like I could feel it, and I was like, whoa, that, be that together feeling? Or being in a dance, and what happens when your bodies sync up as a whole group? Or I was uh, the, the president of the drill team in my high school um, <laughs> in California, and you know, 100 girls. And we could get ourselves synced up. And it's like, what that feels like, you know, when something like that is happening. And then you could kind of reverse that idea and what am I syncing up to out here? That that's so physical. And I love that feeling. Well, I, you know, over time, I feel like by dancing and by being in my body in a certain way, I, I learned when I was in sync and when I was out of sync. And I also learned that I, when I was syncing up with stuff I didn't want to be in sync with, like, ah! You know, I, ah, it's horrible. Um, it's so over, and then over time through our practice of improvising that we could actually create, be in sync without choreography. Wow, that is so cool. How can that be? Well, now we know that mirror neurons, which are the com one of the components that they look at in attachment for healthy relationships, mirror neurons are actually these, the part of us that's, creating that in sync feeling, which, what, what we used to call kinesthetic identification, the ability to identify in our body with the movement of another. So if I go like that, you know, or if I go, hum, 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 your body, if we're in sync, will st soon start having that feeling, even if you're just sitting there. Uh, that is a dance thing, it's an athlete thing. You, we rely on that in physical arts. But that's a thing that's happening in business. And people are actually manipulating us with this, right? And they are t entraining us. They are entrancing us. Um, and they're also, it can be done for the good, right? Because we're, we're so, this is how I know that one body, when one body suffers, another body suffers. When one body rejoices, another rejoices. Our bodies are in sync. And we're meant to be this way, and it's when people aren't able to be in sync that there's illness, right? So, 
by dancing or, or in training that through any physical form, building it up and building awareness about it, we can be more, I think, skillful. And I can actually learn to tolerate being out of sync as part of a necessary part of the dance. And I can learn how to differentiate and let go of that, this person being in sync with this person in this way. And I don't have to call that lack of peace, right? I can let go. And that's physical. Again, it's, this, is, this is all rooted in physiology. It's not a, just a m idea in my head. So that, that too, is, this is like a whole other part of the, the wild and wonderful thing of being embodied and actually knowing, having choices to play with that is a part of the highest creative form of dance and just this little thing of like us being here in sync and occasionally probably wondering if we are. <laughs> you know, <laughs> are we in sync? <laughs> I don't know. Um, so, yeah, mirror neurons and, and again, something that science has now proven. But that is trained in the arts. <laughs>